Hello, this is Gary Fox, and uh, we're going to have another tutorial on LibreCAD. I'm just now starting it up, and it's the blank slate like, uh, like it is when you just start it up. The only thing I'm going to do is turn off the grid just because I don't like it. I want to show you a couple of little features here. First one, I'm going to draw a line, so a selected line, a line with two points. And uh, I just start randomly drawing. And the thing I wanted to point out is that the first point of the next line is the last point of the previous line as long as you continue to left click. If you right click, it stops. But then as soon as you left click, it'll pick right up. However, if you right click two times, see right now it says select first point. If I click again, it says command, and I gotta click the little button over here to restart it again. That's gonna be very handy to continue drawing lines from the previous point for where we're gonna be going next. Okay, the second function I wanna show you um, before I do it, I'll clear the screen. And let's go back to the main menu. And we'll go delete. We'll select everything. And we'll continue function. And it's all gone. Uh, it's a new function called spline. And spline, what it does is it simulates... Back in the old days, I guess, they used to, when they hand draw, drew things, they, uh, if they want smooth curves, they would use a piece of stiff metal or a piece of stiff wood and then form it around some points that they had there to uh, form this smooth curve. Uh, and they called that piece of metal a spline. Well, they simulate that with some math on this software. And uh, the point that I wanted to make was, as if you saw as I drew that, which I'll draw on another one, it looks like I've exited out of it. Uh, if you see as I draw these splines, that the uh, points are outside of where the curve goes. And they usually are. Um, but, you know, we can get really creative and make loop-to-loops and all kinds of things here. Okay. The second thing I wanted to point out is that if we go back to this and uh, we can be in the main menu, we select one of these, uh, we can see the points and then we can go back and modify those points. And I've been having a little bad luck with that tonight. but uh, There we go. You see that it's modifying it so I can change that curve once I have it. Uh, it seems as if the software is acting a little bit funny. And so it seems to work better if you're going to change points to then go to the next point. And uh, it seems to be that the software, right, we're right on the flaky edge of where the software wants to work. But you can see I'm doing it. Those are handy if you're uh, trying to draw something where you have a curve and uh, a smooth point. It's not very useful for most drafting that I've seen. But... Uh, Every once in a while you do get stuck with something like this, so you have to modify it, and you need to work with it. Again, I'm going to delete this, uh, because that's the end of what I wanted to show you on that. So, we will go back, we're in the main menu. We're going to select everything. And we're going to continue action, and it's gone. Okay, now I'm going to show you one more new function. The very first thing we want to do is create a, la a new layer. I'm going to call that layer Picks for Picture. And that's just kind of my shorthand term. And I'm going to make this layer green for a reason. Uh, and you'll see why in a minute. And so we create that layer. Okay, what I'm going to do is do this Import Picture function, or Insert Image. And I happen to already have an image. Uh, it's the very first car that I owned. Uh, so we're going to import that. 
and now we need to uh, zoom in so we've got it as full screen. I also picked that car because it's really blocky. Uh, it's not like the newer cars that have lots of curves. So this is going to be simple for this. Okay, I'm still in picks. If I were going to choose to draw lines on this right now, uh, those lines would be green. And uh, that's why I made set that line, that layer to be green so I would realize that they're there and I'm going to delete that line. I'm going to go to zero, layer zero and now what we're going to do is we're going to trace out this uh, parts of this car. We're not going to get very far because uh, the amount of time is going to get me um, and it's pretty boring to sit here and watch me do that. So again I'm going to go to line two points and I'm going to go free positioning and we're going to start trying to trace out this car body and uh, as things start curving so a straight line doesn't fit very good you need to rethink about whether you want to uh, create a new point and as you see in just a minute as I get to the really curvy parts of this automobile I uh, I started doing lots of points and I'm at one of those right now at this wheel well so we will do lots of points there it's still going to end up looking kind of blocky and if I really had the time and really wanted to do it I might try a spline curve there which is why I just taught you about the spline curve so we'll draw this one right here continue on Just keep drawing those two point lines until we kind of get to a point where we feel like hey this is kind of what I want to look at. I'm going to draw this as if they, I was seeing that piece of metal underneath. And uh, let's see what we've done. And now this is the reason we brought the picture in on its own layer. We can now turn that layer off. And that's looking a whole lot like the side of that automobile. Uh, this function is useful. We used to use it quite a bit at one place where I worked. Uh, we were able to take photographs. And I should still be in the line function now. And I am. Uh, we were able to take photographs of, uh, of sites where work was going to be done. And so as we took those photographs, then we inserted them into a drawing. And we just drew the changes right on the photograph. Pretty much what I'm doing here. You see I did a lousy job with that gas uh, cap back here, but uh, the purpose of this is to show you how it can be done, not to create a pretty drawing <laughs> right now. Uh, so I got my disclaimer there. Uh, looks like I missed that point completely. So we'll start over here and start a little bit higher than we were. Uh, and we're drawing the hood right now. Bonnet for those of you in Great Britain. I'm in America. We speak lousy English. <laughs> now I've ticked off the Americans as well as the British, I assume. I'm not doing too good at marketing here, am I? <laughs> okay, and let's see what our picture looks like. And you see, we're starting to get the uh, the automobile kind of done. And then we can always go back and modify that, make a circle out of it, so on and so forth. So, we now have the uh, picture that looks like this car. Okay, the drawing that we're doing right now would not be very good for anything to do with scaling. You can export this. And you can export it as a picture, and you could have it either exported with the uh, picture layer in there or without the picture layer. Uh, so then you could import it from that file that you export it to into some kind of drawing package. Uh, and you can modify this thing, get an idea, let's say that I want to add a, add a uh, scoop to the front end of it. 
because uh, I think you know this would really make a really nice drag car. Uh, and I'm kind of talking stuff right now, but we could add a scoop, kind of get an idea of what the car would look like with a scoop. Uh, so you can have some fun here, and then you could actually try to semi-scale that. That's the whole problem with trying to do a drawing like this. Uh, you really should be taking a photograph yourself, and you should take a photograph from the side view or the front view or whatever you're wanting to uh, take a photograph of. Uh, we've got perspective messing with us here. So things at the back end are looking smaller than what they are at the front end because the front end's closer to the camera. Um, and uh, so we couldn't scale to this drawing, but we could have a kind of a picture that kind of lets us know what the, the uh, thing is that we're working with. Uh, so ideally what you'd want to do is take photographs and take those photographs from the side that you're primarily interested in. Um, okay, now what I would like to show you is I'm going to save this drawing. And uh, I'm going to show you something about how it saves the drawing. Now, I can't guarantee that it does exactly the same thing on uh, Windows as it does here on Linux. But my guess is it probably is exactly the same way. And uh, the CAD program that we used at the place where I worked actually inserted the drawings into the, uh, into the uh, drawing file. This one doesn't look like it does that, which could cause a problem. And that's what I'm going to show you. And I'm guessing where that corner is of that door. I'm kind of messing around right now. So let's see what I just did to it. Eh, I don't look too bad. Uh, and the rocker panels on the one I had, that's one of the things that rusted out on the thing. Uh, that was back when cars were cars. Okay, so we're going to save this thing. So we're going to do a file. Well, we'll just do a save, and it's going to automatically make me name it. And I'm going to call this thing uh, Car Picture. Okay, and we saved it. And now I'm going to exit out of LibreCAD completely. And I'm going to go down here and find Car Picture. Hopefully I'll find it. Where'd it go? There it is, carpicture.dxf. And when I pull it back up, everything's there, just like it was when I left it. You can see right now this video is uh, going to take a little too much time. And uh, I am going to split it into two parts. I uh, hope you're learning something. This is Gary Fox of Great Wing.